think art is a form of abstraction and coding is also a different form of abstraction. And so to me, these are both ways to, in a sense, be able to think differently and sort of schematically in a way about life. Um, they seem very different, but I think they both have that characteristic. And that's often, for example, why in art, you don't necessarily want something as an absolute, accurate, you know, photographic representation of things. Sometimes you do, sometimes you want interesting photography that, but again, often the interesting photography is looking at things in a different way and sometimes an abstract way. I think that, you know, well, I think in terms of aesthetics, you know, having good aesthetics for things helps often because in our very complex world, the aesthetics allows you, if they're well put together, to, to really handle that and make a workflow and make things happen in a very intuitive way. And often that's actually the biggest battle now, not the raw capability under the surface. I think in a way iPhones, which are about 10 years old now, kind of proved that point. By having a good aesthetic, a good workflow, they could actually handle many of the tasks that before had seemed kind of impossible on the smartphone. Um, so I think that um, in that sense, the, the aesthetic is very important. When I say interface, I think it's sort of like, there are different ways, ideas that have come as to how you connect with machines, uh, of all machines. I mean, whether it's driving a car with a steering wheel or whether it's coding a computer in different ways. Now, early on, often what happens is that the, the interface is connected very hard with the machinery. You know, you, you don't have the capacity, you had to code in machine language early on because the computers weren't big enough to do anything more. So you start with a thing that's very close to how the machine works. And over time you say, well, actually, we don't have to do that. We can now have visual programming, or we can have people um, working at a different level up from the base capability. But I think what you find often is, in all of these areas, you need, it, it, one doesn't replace what comes before. So we still have syntactic coding. That's very good for precision. It's very good in many circumstances. We still, we have point and click. That's really useful for other circumstances, but it hasn't replaced the syntactic coding. And I think what we're finding now is that people forgot about the precision and the extent to which you need that interface, as well as some of the more modern ways of, of interacting um, mm. with, with the machinery. So I like the different shapes, the different, uh, the different levels of granularity. I like very fine. Have well, you painted in school? Yes, but not very well. Many years ago, I tend to do more photography, and uh, whoops, and um, well, you can, you can be dirty. Okay. But well, I'm afraid that this you're, you're really giving me a test beyond what I'm uh, equipped to do very well here. I'm sure you can read lots of psychology into what I'm doing here, and I like to overlap things like this. But I'm afraid this is this is really not representing, I think, what I was saying or what I'd like to achieve. It's thick yellow. Yeah, I suppose, in a, in a, but you see, you're so abstracted up from that that you don't really notice the zeros and ones. It's much more about structures and how you can put things together and which way you think about something. Mm -hmm. And one of the problems that we always have with coders is that if you're really good in some way of coding, you can often be 50 times faster than somebody who just can't quite see it. Yeah. So it's one of these things where it's kind of winner takes all because it's very hard. If you, you either see it really, really quite quickly or you often go around many different ways. It's a bit like communicating. Some people can say very precisely and very succinctly what they mean. And for some people it's much harder. And part of that is the language structure. Mm -hmm. Part of what you've given me here with the paint, and I'm showing my inadequacy of using the actual machinery of the paint. And part of the craft is knowing what's possible. As in knowing what, what can be done. You know, if you're an artist and you're actually painting properly with, with paints, unlike what I've done, you know what's possible. You know what different effects can have. You've got experience of that. And, and that allows you to it kind of, it allows you to express yourself in a broader canvas, literally. Um, and I think with language, this is often said, with human language, you know, mm -hmm. um, the, um, if you learn to speak German and French and English and other languages, the, the, it, it culturally actually changes the way you think. The, the language, the style of the language changes the way you think. It isn't just that you're representing how you think in that language, and that's very true in coding. 
early on with, uh, with what's now Wolf from Language was Mathematica, we had a lot of people coming from Fortran. Mm -hmm. And Fortran was very, you know, very fixed procedural sort of, you know, for loops and things like that. And so we found a lot of the early users, they couldn't get out of that way of thinking when they were programming in our much broader canvas of mathematical multi-paradigm approach. I think it's just different, but it's an interesting question as to whether uh, the average Chinese or the average Frenchman or the average German or Brit or whatever it is can has a different tranche on, on what to do. I mean, one thing I have said about maths education is that I think that in the current sort of procedural testing that we do, mm -hmm. um, some of the countries uh, that are good societally at very procedural things, and I probably can, you know, some of the Asian countries I put in that category, probably do relatively better on those tests than Western European countries, the US, for example, might do, which have slightly less rigid ways societal to think. Now, does that mean they're necessarily better at problem solving? No, not necessarily. But it's quite hard to fit those together. Uh, and, and I think, so there, I think there probably is a cultural element mm -hmm. to, um, to what gets done. And, and I think you see this also in different countries, right? I mean, you know, Germany and Austria are places extremely famous for classical music and composers. Not that they're not famous for many artists and things, but you know, the French have a huge number of artists, for example. Uh, you know, uh, and so forth. So uh, you, you have seen these biases, which I think are to do with people, what they learn, but also to do with the way they think about things, the way the, the culture is.